All right, Shalom. Shalom. Back again with another video, another camp lesson. And before we begin this lesson, we want to turn face the east and we want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kudash. We want to give double honors to the elders and apostles who rule well, chiefly of Great Millstone, where we've learned this truth. That's right. We're not officially a part of the Great Millstone camp, however, we do strictly learn only from their doctrine because we believe that it's the true doctrine and they are the true prophets and teachers that have been set up in these end times to give us a correct understanding and the correct breakdowns of these scriptures. I want to say peace and salutations also to you Akim, you brothers, like-minded brothers who are out there laboring, pushing this word out in all truth and in sincerity. also want to say Shalom to you Israelite sisters that may be listening and also to you Israelites that are, uh, may look like these other nations you know, you, you've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. You may look like these other nations, but your seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is the chosen seed line. So we're going to bring this lesson in. You know, we're going to touch on a few uh, prophetic uh, events that are, that are taking place in the earth today. And uh, Lord willing, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, this be an edifying uh, camp lesson. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to start in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 19. I'm going to start at verse uh, verse 10, straight to the point. And it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And that's the spirit we got to be in in these times that we're coming into like you know you could switch on the news and you could see that these these prophecies are unfolding one after the other and it's, it's getting so so um, rapid now that there's so many prophecies that are just popping off popping off the pages you know it's hard to keep up with a lot of them sometimes you know we got prophecies of, of World War three getting ready to kick off you've been seeing like all these these um, events in the news the Iranian president you know his helicopter crashed so-called <laughs> right you know obviously there's, there's a bit of controversy behind that because you know that's, that's gonna ramp up this war exactly you know. exactly you got the um, I think it's the I, ICJ or the IC the International Criminal Courts I think it's the ICC right uh, uh, issuing an arrest warrant for the, the Israeli PM Benjamin yeah, not a nail, not a not a nail, not a you know, but yeah, not not a J double that's it, right? So, you know, you got all that ramping off, you know, you got America now sort of um, not seeing that that uh, arrest warrant as as uh, as um, what, what do they call it? I'm trying to think of the word, it's like uh, not valid, yeah, or, or they, they don't they don't recognize Remember. it. We have a jurisdictional complaint here and that we don't believe the ICC has jurisdiction. Who does have jurisdiction here? So the government of Israel has uh, jurisdiction. Over we the have, occupied territory. We have jurisdiction. Over, over Gaza, which is not we entirely have, They occupied. have jurisdiction into looking at, at uh, the actions okay, by their so military the personnel. Okay, so the Palestinians, if they we, have a complaint, they have to bring it to Israeli we, courts. They, we have jurisdiction and we ha uh, you have uh, with the use of our equipment. I'm sorry, with the, how do you have With the use of our military equipment Matt, that we have provided. How do you have jurisdiction? If you look at the Leahy law, if you look at... Look, that, that's, uh, that's not jurisdiction in a criminal process. That's not in a criminal process, but it has to do with... Uh, the determinations that we make and the policies that flow yeah, from it. Not so, but Matt, long term, you were right that we you want to see. You used to work for DOJ, you, Matt. You were on. Uh, there is no it is, U.S. Does it is not, not have jurisdiction. There are here. different. I wasn't referring to criminal jurisdiction, Matt. There are different ways to look at this. Long term, we agree with you that the Palestinian people should be a state that has the and have the ability to make these determinations. But that's not where right. we are today. That's where we're trying to get. To. I bet that they didn't think that he was going to tell us this. The ICC prosecutor who issued the arrest warrant for Netanyahu and his foreign minister said that he was threatened by high level officials and was told that the ICC was built for Africa and thugs like Putin, not for Western leaders. And I'm gonna play the clip so you can hear it straight out of his mouth, but they are no longer being quiet and they are saying the loudest part out loud. 
elected leaders uh, speak to me and uh, very be, you know, be very blunt. This court is built for Africa and for thugs like Putin, was what one senior leader uh, told me. Um, we don't view it like that. This court is the legacy of Nuremberg. This court is a sad indictment of humanity. This court should be the triumph of law over power and brute force. Grab what you can, take what you want, do what you will. And uh, we're going to simply be, un, uh, we're not going to be dissuaded. You know, the, the, it, the, doesn't go, it doesn't go in their favor. Exactly, exactly. They're the ones that set it up to, to hold countries accountable to, to not commit war crimes. And then the, the, the country that is actually committing the war crimes, which is America's ally, now it's, it's not recognized, you know. They don't follow their own rules because these devils lie, man. They're, they're corrupt. That's like right. The scriptures say, man, they're the ungodly. They're corrupt. You know, it says that in Psalm 73, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. These people are just dirtbags, man. That's, that's right. And, 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 you know, all, all this, this, these events that are unfolding in, in the news is, is leading to that, that mighty war that's coming. World War Three, right? You know, I was, I was speaking to my brother before we, we started this lesson and, and we were going into to articles that they're, they're sort of releasing now about, you know, the, the draft, you know, or in the UK they call it conscription. Mandatory National Service in the British Army ended more than 60 years ago, but it could soon be brought back to life. We will introduce a bold new model of National Service for 18-year-olds. Rishi Sunak hopes the policy will capture attention at the start of a long election campaign. Under his plans, all 18-year-olds would choose between a year-long military placement or community volunteering one weekend per month for a year. That could include helping the police, fire service, NHS or care sector. Ministers say nobody would face jail for refusing national service, but can't say how it would be enforced. You know, and, and that that's also falls into prophecy as well. So when, when we, you know, dig into it, you know, you, you understand that e even it was written that these things were to come to pass, yeah. you know? I'll bring it out if you want. Yeah, come on, come on. So, um, in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, I believe it's, uh, uh, yeah. I'll start at 33, because this is a future prophecy as to what is meant to take place in the earth. Okay, mainly America, Babylon the Great. But it basically is telling you that the men are gonna have to go to war, man. And they're gonna die in those wars, man. Okay, which is gonna bring about uh, the prophecy of Isaiah 4 and 1, because there's gonna be a shortage of men. There's a scripture in Isaiah 13 and something also. It says how the Lord will make a man more precious than fine gold. Lord willing, I'll bring all those out in a minute, but. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and read this. This is uh, Second Ezra chapter 16 in the Apocrypha and verse, I'll start at 33. It says, The virgins shall mourn, having no, help, uh, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. So the women are going to mourn because the men are going to, there's going to be a shortage of men, man. Okay, so they're gonna mourn, meaning you know, for those that might not know, meaning that they're gonna lament, they're gonna be very sorrowful, okay, because they ain't gonna have the help they need. Feminism is going out the window, man. All this misindependent, I can do it myself, and all that bollocks, man. All that bull crap. You've been sold a false, uh, you've been sold lies, man, and you, Eves, you fell for it once again. As you did as you did in the garden with the serpent you fell for his deception again that you don't need a man in the house you can do everything a man can do and all this stuff you ate the fruit again man okay and you don't even realize it but it's letting you know right here that you women are gonna be sorrowful when your husbands ain't around because you know you need a man all right it says in verse 34 in the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. So in the wars, the men are going to be destroyed and they're also going to die from famine. And when it talks about the wars, it doesn't necessarily strictly mean that they're going to be drafted off into war in Ukraine or whatever. Although that will happen. 
But there's also going to be civil war, man, because of civil unrest when this system collapses. It's only a matter of time, man. It's a ticking time bomb. Britain may be on the brink of a race war. On October the 7th, Hamas attacked Israel. This was greeted by scenes of celebration in parts of the country. And in the weeks that followed, we saw pro-Palestine marches and anti-anti-Semitism counter-protests. But in the last couple of weeks, things have stepped up a notch. After eight months, we finally did something. We shut it down! But it has got more sinister. Swastikas have been found carved into toilet doors at Regent's Park College at Oxford University. And pro-Israel supporters were subjected to vile abuse at a 250,000-person strong march last Saturday. You can see the red paint just scrawled across the front of the Phoenix cinema there. And now the pro-Israelis have had enough and they are turning up in serious numbers. The dollar's about to crash. When that happens, we're going to enter that time that the Bible calls Jacob's trouble because there's going to be chaos in the streets that the world, this world ain't prepared for, man. It's going to catch many people off guard and, and people are going to panic, okay? They're going to be in panic mode. It's going to be survival of the fittest. Yeah, and speaking on that, like, like you were bringing out about the women, you know, uh, uh, in mourning, lamenting, right? They're, they're lamenting now. Like, a lot of women are, are depressed. They're, they're going through this life on their own. They want to find that perfect man, but they've been sold a dream. They've been sold a dream uh, uh, for a mystery man that doesn't exist, you yeah. know? The, yeah. the, the, He's the, got to make six figures. And yeah, this and that, exactly. You know? Six figures, exactly, is what my, my point I was, I was coming to. Yeah. It's like, yo, you can see that the markets are crashing right now. Money isn't worth what it used to be. You know, back in the in the, the early 50s, 60s, whatever, they, they could afford, a man could go out to his job and afford, I mean, maybe not, not Jake, not, not the, the so-called African-American, right? Mm. Or the, the so-called uh, blacks in, in America, you know, maybe they, they were on, on the bread line, you know, struggling. But the, the so-called Edomite, they were able to do that, you know? The Edomite, not the so-called. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's lucky, it's lucky. It's so good, so yeah. good. But yeah, the, the Edomites, they, they were able, like the man was able to do that and he was oppressing the women, right? They, they were being oppressed in their homes. So what did they do? They got hold of Eve and they convinced you to stand in their corner and fight. Yep. And once they got the rights that they wanted, they went back to their husbands and then they made you follow this dream. And, and, and ever so, uh, ever since then, Esau's perpetrated this, this fallacy, this, this false idea of, of uh, you know a happy home you know happy wife happy life they've perpetrated that and you have fallen for that and now look you have no covering because a lot of a lot of uh you know jakes or, or so-called black black men they they they're not really dealing with with the black women like that now i mean obviously you know i speak for myself as a man i would prefer a so-called uh black woman you know i would definitely prefer that but Am I going to go out and, and seek one? Probably not right now because a lot of them are out of order, you know? There's not many righteous women that, that are out there. But the, the thing that, that I, was, I was sort of touching on in, in regards to the money, the finances, the markets are about to crash. All you women, proud women that, that jumped on the, the OnlyFans, you know, boasting. Like, yeah, I'm making, I'm making six figures, you know, I, I, I'm the, the top 1% of OnlyFans, you know, I'm... You know, I got, you know, these, these accounts, you know, I'm just making money. All that money ain't going to be nothing, right? And all, all that's going to happen is the men, right, that have seen you, seen everything that you've got to offer because you've just laid it out there for, you know, you sold your, your, yourself for a bit of money. Now the money isn't worth anything, but all these men have that image in their head of what you look like because you've displayed it. What do you think is going to happen during Jacob's trouble, uh -huh. you know? And you ain't got no protection because, you know, <sighs> nobody wants to deal with you. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not looking good for you, for you women out there, yeah. right? Yeah, because, you know, the scriptures, that, the scripture that I just read, it says that the men are going to die in a war mm -hmm. and a famine. Now, the reason that they're going to die a famine is because when this system collapses and it all kicks off, the prophecies are just going to happen 
simultaneously, man. It's yep. going to speed up. And one of the prophecies is famine, man. With war always comes famine, okay? Mm -hmm. People seem to think they don't really know history like that. So they're living in this false reality, this false sense of security, and thinking that famine ain't going to touch them in a, this so-called first world country, man. Mm -hmm. When you're dead wrong, okay? You do not. Uh, you haven't seen the effects of this this war yet because it hasn't reached that point yet. But it will. It ain't gonna die down, man. You gotta prepare yourself. But only the wise are gonna do that. Yeah. And you you can you can even look it up. Um, what they did in uh, Venezuela, like the the you know the economy collapsed, crashed, you know. And then a lot of those those uh, Venezuelans were making their way to the U.S. Like you can listen to some of the stories from the women, like what was happening to them on that journey up to, you know, so-called freedom. You find a lot of condoms alongside the of the river, and I would interview the women or ask them, "Why do you have why, why do you have birth control? Why do you have condoms with you?" And then their response is, "Well, if we're going to be sexually assaulted, at least we have protection. We can ask the man at least, you know, wear a condom to either prevent a, a pregnancy or, or or a sexually transmitted disease. A lot of women they they're traveling with their children, you know, on their or on their own and they'll carry condoms with them and they'll be traveling in, in uh, groups of people they'll be looking for some type of uh, safety so they'll look to the men in the group say hey well if I stay with you will you take care of me and they don't have anything to give them so they offer themselves yeah. and, and you know I'm not gonna say that they're uh, that they, they call it a, a developing nation so they're not rich like America right America's l live lavishly you know the, the land of the free the home of the brave you know like that, the country's gonna collapse, and it's like, yo, know, you're just gonna be in a in really, in in dire straits. So I think when when my brother was bringing out that scripture earlier, it was going into the fact that you women are gonna mourn. Like you, you're you're gonna be in bad shape because the men that are left over, they're not gonna be trying to protect you. They're gonna be using you. Yeah, there's gonna be wickedness out here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna resort to their animalistic, fleshly instincts. Man. Exactly. And, and men are deprived, man. I saw an article the other day. This uh, man was an Uber driver, had a woman in the back, and he just sat in traffic, started pulling out his wiener and masturbating with her in the back. Like, that's how insane people are in these end times, man. That's, there's, de there's pure demons out there on these people, on these two thirds. That's why mm -hmm. a man of the Lord is going to be precious and fine gold because they're in their right mind. The Lord has cleaned us up. We're not going to take advantage of these women when they're vulnerable, okay? We're not going to go around uh, uh, actually abusing, <laughs> if I can I say, you know, you get what I'm saying. We're not going to go around actually abusing these women, okay, during that time when they're vulnerable and they can't call 911. Yes, you won't be able to call 911, 999, whatever. You ain't going to be able to call the police, man. You ain't going to call Esau for protection. All of that is out the window. That's why the Lord is getting ready to humble you women, man. Let me just bring out Isaiah 4 and 1, uh -huh. right? It says, <clears throat> and in that day, right, that time period that the Bible calls Jacob's trouble, okay, basically when this system collapses and there's no food anywhere and all hell breaks loose and you can't call 911, can't call the ambulance, okay? You can't even call your neighbor to protect you, your friendly neighbor, because he's going to be one of them, okay? waiting for that day where he can get his hands on you you know what i mean fantasizing over you yeah. you don't know how sick and twisted these men are out here man these two-thirds and stuff man <clears throat> so it says uh, isaiah 4 and 1 in that day seven women which seven represents completion it doesn't mean exactly seven women seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel so we're going to provide our own food and clothing, okay? And women are, these days, you try telling a woman you got to share a man alone, let alone provide your own clothing and food, man. <laughs> man, if he ain't making six figures and da-da-da, if he can't do this for me, that for me, all these high expectations, these delusional expectations, man. The Lord says right here, this is going to be your mindset during that time because you're going to realize that you're above all money ain't going to protect you you need protection from a man of the lord man mm -hmm. so it says in that day isaiah 4 and 1 in that day 
seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So you women are going to want protection. You're going to want that shame taken away. The shame of being a misindependent, I don't need a man and all. You're going to do a 180, in other words, man. You proud women out there that can't be told nothing and that you watching this video right now and kissing your teeth, okay? Watch what the Lord does to you, man. You think it's a joke. You have no idea the times you're living in because the Lord didn't bless you women with wisdom, man. That's why men are the head, you women are the tail, man. You women are the weaker vessel. Men are meant to rule over the woman at all times and that's just the way it is, man. And if you don't get down with the right order, you're out of here, man, okay? You're no use to us. Don't come running to us in Jacob's trouble because we're gonna, hey, we're gonna vet these women, man. Meaning we're gonna suss you out, see what you're made of, see if you're still hold, trying to hold on to that feminist, westernized mindset, man. You can get the hell out of our face during that time, you know? I got a precept here too. Yeah, you can. Yeah, this is in the book of Isaiah, um, <laughs> chapter 32. And there's some, there's some, you know, bombshell scriptures in here, you know, about you women. So this is uh, Isaiah 32, and I'm gonna start at verse two. It says, and a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as a rivers, uh, as rivers of water in a dry place, uh, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So that man, that righteous man, is going to be that protection from all the 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 uh, the, the troubles that are coming uh, for you, ladies. I'm going to jump down to to verse nine actually, because like I said, Isaiah 32 has got some some bombshells in here. This is uh, Isaiah 32 and nine. It says, "Rise up." you women that are at ease oh, that's it, man. hear my voice ye careless daughters give ear unto my speech it says many days and years shall ye be troubled ye careless women for the vintage shall uh, for the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come it says tremble ye women that are at ease be troubled ye careless ones strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins Right, this is this is out the the scriptures. The scriptures is is making that clear that that you women are going to go through a time of trouble, mm. right? Mm -hmm. No protection. You know, you can't find a, a man anywhere because because of the wars. Like a, a, a large chunk of, of men are, are gone, mm. and the ones that are left, you know, they ain't no good. They ain't gonna be coming out to protect you, no. right? So the only like like my brother said, the Lord will make a man more precious than fine gold. And that's a righteous man, mm. right? And this isn't a lesson, you know, this isn't a camp lesson to, to jump on you women. It's just, we're, we're going into the prophecies and we're explaining that, you know, war is upon us. Mm. You know, we're, we're in wartime right now, mm -hmm. yeah? Yep. And, and th all these prophecies are gonna come to pass. So this is a, uh, one of those prophecies included in that, that's gonna come to pass. Yeah. And like my brother said, you can suck your teeth and, and roll your eyes all you want, but when it happens, what are you gonna do? Because a lot of you proud women are gonna get rejected. That's it, man. You know? That's it. Because a man of the Lord is in his right mind and he ain't gonna stand for no westernized mindset, man. You you of no use to us. Mm -hmm. You're only gonna slow us down and get in the way. Yeah. Okay. Imagine uh, a, a proud woman who can't be told anything. Yeah. Now we gotta go this way because there's martial law troopers coming and the woman's like, you can't tell me nothing. Oh. Like, yo, all right, go that way. Exactly. See ya. Hey, leave it, leave it be. Yeah, man. you're gonna melt. Yeah. Listen, any of you women, I don't care if it's the woman I got now, all right, while everything's peaceful. Any of you women get in our way during Jacob's trouble, man, you're out of here, man, okay? And we're going to take on women if we need them. We're not going to take them on because, oh, Isaiah 4 and 1 says we can have as many girls as we want, so, because we're in a righteous mindset, okay? Us that the Lord is truly dealing with, okay? We ain't in the... We ain't, we ain't thinking of Isaiah 4 and 1 as like some rap video mm -hmm. where we can just have bare girls in our arms noshing us off. You know what I mean? It ain't even like that, man. We ain't thinking on that level. That's wickedness, man. The Lord has cleaned up the new rulers of this earth. Lord willing, we be them men. I don't want to jump the gun and say that's us. But if we endure to the end and the Lord keeps dealing with us, man, you know what I mean? Then, hey, we're in the right mindset to rule and to have multiple wives, man. And we're not just going to pick wives because we can. Oh, let's go wife shopping. You know? Mm -hmm. 
It ain't gonna be like that. Listen, if a woman can bring something to us, some kind of thing we might need to survive. Some hey, value. this woman's got a crib that we can duck out in, and you know she's, you know, you know she's she's okay to be around or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, adds value. I got what she needs to be protected, and yeah, she's not slowing me down hey then hey she can come along too whatever i don't know exactly how it's going to play out but the men of the lord are just going to be in a righteous mindset yeah okay that's the point i'm trying to get at. yeah and know? it's not it's not going to be like a you're going to be oppressed oh yeah you know i have to deal with this no it's not going to be an oppression it's it's look we're the leaders right you follow our lead yeah and you'll be straight if, oh. if you're if, if you're righteous you know mm. If, if we're, we're those men, like my brother just mentioned, if we're those men, we ain't going to oppress you. It's going to be for your own good. That's it. You know? That's it. I brought out Isaiah 4 and 1. I just want to jump up to verse, I mean, chapter 3 real quick. Now, you can start at 16 and read down. And it explains um, what the Lord has done to our women as far as, you know, making them bold for their haughtiness and all that stuff. But it also relates to the time we're coming into, man. Because women are not going to be wanting to walk around looking pretty and cute during that time. A lot of women are going to shave their hair off. They ain't going to be wearing makeup. They're going to be trying to hide their breasts. Yeah, woe to be those that... going to sackcloth. Yeah, woe yeah, to man. those women that have BBLs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um... Things will stand out. <laughs> yeah, stand out. You're not going to want to be noticed mm -hmm. during that time, okay? Because women are going to be prey, okay? You're gonna you're gonna go from living the high life and traveling the world and on going on these cruises and all that, and it all being about you men chasing you and wishing they had a piece of you, but they know they can't just take you. But during the time we're coming into, you women are gonna be fair game, and you're gonna need a man to protect you, man. We can't stress that enough, and we're not saying it just to rub it in your face. We're saying it as a warning, and if you take heed to that warning. And stop looking at this video as, oh, you guys always getting on the women. You know, you women that are in that mindset, you're through already, man. But the ones that cleave to the wise, to, to wisdom, cleave to the prophets, those are the ones that the Lord, lo Lord loves. The Lord said he loves none but he that dwelleth with wisdom, man. He, she, you know, a person that dwells with wisdom. All right, so I just want to, um, like I said, I want to read Isaiah chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 24. You can start at 16 and read on down. But I'm going to, for the sake of time, the point is in 24 and 25. It says, um, And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, you know, you women smelling nice, you like to take care of yourself, you like to impress people, you know what I mean? Even if you don't, you don't like men, men ain't shit, all that, you still try to impress them. You still try to look cute. You know, you like the idea of them liking what they can't have. It says, and, it's, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. You women are going to stink because, for one, you're not going to want to smell nice because you don't want to attract men. And, and, and for two, uh, you're not going to have access to your feminine products and stuff, man. Mm -hmm. You women are going to be walking around with blood all over your jeans and you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be nasty out here. And there's just things that you women ain't taking into consideration, man. <clears throat> a lot of you women, anyway. So it says, uh, And there shall, it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Meaning, meaning that you women are going to be out of shape and stuff, man. You're not going to have these things that form your body to make you look all slim and all that. Instead of well set hair, boldness. You ain't gonna be wearing your weaves. A lot of you are gonna be shaving your hair off. You know? And you women were cursed with boldness for your haughtiness anyway. You know, you'll get that back in the kingdom. But on this side, you try to bypass these curses and put weave in your hair. Put these other nations hair in your hair, in your on your head, wearing these head hair hats. But you ain't going to want to wear them during that time, man. You ain't going to be trying to look cute. It says, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, okay, and burning instead of beauty, you're just basically going to want to look ugly as possible so that men ignore you. Because 
I mean, not that that's gonna really help because a lot of a lot of men out there they'll take a wet hole, man. Yeah. They don't care if you you you're a walking uh, sex doll to them. You know what I mean? I'll say it. You know, to a lot of men, they don't care if you're ugly, but it will help to make yourself not look pretty because those are gonna be the biggest targets, man. It's gonna be hell for you women that are beautiful. All you Instagram models or you women that strive to be Instagram models, man. You women that have been conformed to this Western society and all about trying to cake your makeup on and look beautiful as possible. Hey, man, you really have no idea about the times you're coming into. So it says in verse 25, it says, Thy men, thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. So there you have it again, a precept backing up what I brought out earlier in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16. That the men are going to die by war. There's going to be a shortage of men out here. And the ones that are left over, they're going to be demons. You ain't going to want to run to them. So the man of the Lord is the man that's going to be as precious as fine gold that these scriptures are talking about. man. Okay. So it says, And her gates shall lament and mourn. And she being desolate shall sit on the ground. You're going to be in a low place. You ain't going to be up on your high horse anymore. You're going to sit on the ground, okay? Uh, 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 I was going to say where you belong, but I ain't going, I ain't going to be cold like that. Because you women that are in order, you don't belong on the ground, okay? But, you know, you women that are out of order, you're going to get in your rightful place the, like the dog you are, okay? Because us men don't look at it. Real men don't look at you as the prize. You're not the prize. We're the prize. And you're going to realize that very soon, okay? That the men of the Lord are the prize. I don't care how it sounds. This is the truth, man. Okay? Got anything you want to bring out? Yeah, I was going to bring out Ecclesiastes. Okay. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, just touching on, on the point, like we keep reiterating about you know the the times that we're coming into this is the book of ecclesiastes chapter three and we'll start from the top it says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven right it says a time to be born a, and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted it says verse three it says a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up so, you know, eventually, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, this isn't our, our, our rest right now. So we can't, you know, think that we're going to be able to build things up in this kingdom and, and, you know, sort of live in this Israelite community and everybody come together because we're not there. Like, it's not that time. Right? I'm going to jump down to verse 8, which is the point. It says, a time to love and a time to hate. We're in that time right now, you know. The love is gone, you know. You're seeing the hate. You know they're they're bringing out these these uh, news articles and news reports about hate speech, you know, and and all you know you're starting to see things waxing worse and worse and people getting more cold. It says uh, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace, and that's the time we're coming into a time of hate and a time of war, right? Mm -hmm. it says the time of peace is is once once the Lord comes back. Once the Lord comes back and, and, and establish the kingdom and the elected, you know, uh, are delivered, you know, hey, it's, it, it's going to be a time of peace, man, forever, an eternal peace. But right now, we're in that time of hate and a time of war. And another thing I want to speak on, mm -hmm. if I may, is, as far as the time of hate goes, it's a time for you to realize who your enemy is, okay, and stop loving them, okay? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with hating your enemies. Why would you love the devil? These people are the, these, and you know who I'm talking about, these damn Edomites, man. These cave, cave niggers, <laughs> as I like <laughs> to call them, man. They're the real niggers. Anyway, these cave monkeys, man, they're the real enemy, okay? They're the devil that the Bible speaks of. Why would you want to love the devil, okay? I know it sounds like hate speech, you know, you black Hebrew Israelites always talking about hating people, hating why don't you just love everybody? Why don't we all come together in love? We tried that for too long, man. This is the time I hate. Recognize who your enemy is and separate from them. They're not your damn friend. Yeah, like you say, we, we tried that and it didn't work. 
Now, the scriptures don't tell us to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? The mm. scriptures tell us to hate our enemies. Yeah. Right? We hate what the Lord hates. Right? Fuck yeah. Okay. All right, quick precept speaking on the fact that you need to separate from your enemies and realize that you have enemies, for one, because a lot of you don't even realize you have enemies, man. And I'm talking to you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, you biblical Israelites, man. Not everybody's your friend. When will you wake up and realize this world hates you? These heathens hate you. You'll never fit in with their society. You can try to, but you're always going to be in awkward, uncomfortable situations around these people because you don't fit in. You need to come back to the Lord, man, and come back to the righteous of your people, okay? And the enemies of your people are your own people too. And they're also the people of your own household. Scriptures say a man's foes will be those of his own household. You know what I mean? So, hey, you got to realize that these people of the world, they're no good, man, even if they are your damn family. Okay? Now, let me just quickly um, read this. This is the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, otherwise known as the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha. Chapter 6 and verse 13. It says, Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. People you call your friends in this world, man. Take heed of them. Okay? anyone that claims to be a friend you know what I mean take heed of them because given the opportunity they will stab you in the back yeah and a righteous man of the Lord would never do that because they're in their right mind you can trust a man of the Lord a true man of the Lord but you got to test him whether he is a real man of the Lord there's a lot of false prophets out there man they're in this in this truth for the wrong reason a lot of men in this truth come into it because they heard about Isaiah 4 and 1 oh we can get many women I want to be part of that so now they thinking that they're going to be a king getting noshed off by all these different women and that's solely their purpose for coming in this truth. I'm not saying everybody, but there are people that are in this truth for the wrong reason. But they'll be revealed before long, before too long, okay? Because this is the Lord's movie, man. And he's going to reveal to the world who his, real, who his righteous men are. So it says, separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. And your enemies, <coughs> Salakia, your enemies are them of the other nations, the heathen. Let me just quickly prove that in Nehemiah uh, 5 and 9 real quick. All right, so this is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5 and verse 9. It says, also I said it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Now, I ain't going to break down what this is talking about, but the point is in that last bit right there, man. It says that the heathen are our enemies, man. Okay? So, you need to recognize that the scriptures refer to the heathen as our enemies. And that ain't the only precept that talks about it. You got Psalms 83 describing the other nations as our enemies. Them that hate the most high, they're our enemies, you know what I mean? Psalm, uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 57, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 said we would be sold to our enemies. Who were the only nations that went into slavery on slave ships? It's you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. And wherever you were scattered to and sold, whoever you were sold to, the Bible calls them your enemies, man. Okay, so all these heathen nations that had us in captivity, they're our enemies and they have to pay for what they did to us it also says that in Baruch 4 uh, Baruch 4 and 6 I believe describes uh, that we have enemies if I'm not mistaken let me just quickly pull that up Baruch 4 and 6 right so it says in Baruch 4 and 6 ye were sold to the nations not for your destruction but because ye moved the most high to wrath, ye were sold, uh, ye were delivered to the enemies. See? So wherever we were scattered to, because our original homeland is Israel that was stolen from us, okay, that they're all fighting over right now. The Lord is about to evict them and put the rightful, uh, rightful people of that land back in it, okay? But... Wherever we were sold to, these people are our enemies, man. Because we're scattered among all these nations. So wherever you're living right now, if it ain't Israel, which it ain't, then you're living amongst your enemies. And you need to recognize this, man. 
Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you mentioned earlier about, you know, you got to be careful with, with who you trust, who you put, you know, who you call your friends. And uh, you shouldn't be so uh, quick to just blindly accept that, that they're going to do right by you, right? So the scriptures always say, uh, uh, prove, prove a friend, um, roughly paraphrasing, them, my mind's just not. But it says you got to prove a friend, right? And you got to make sure that, that, they're, they're, you know, um, of a righteous mindset. You know what I mean? Like, like following the the, the law, statutes, and commandments. Do you want me to bring that out quick? Yeah, can't if you if you so got. So this is the book of Sirach six and seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, if you seeking getting new friends or whatever, right? Prove him first, there and be go. not hasty to credit him. Don't be in a rush to say, "Oh, this guy's amazing. He's, he's a good guy," or whatever, man. Okay. So don't be hasty to credit him. You gotta prove if a person is a real friend, man. Yep, yep. See if he can be trusted around your woman or whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far to be honest, because no one passes that test in this world. Everybody wants a piece of your woman, okay? But you know, you got if you can find different ways to prove whether a man is a true friend if mm -hmm. he's loyal. Drop a drop ten dollar bill around him or a ten pound note. Pretend you dropped it. See if he's gonna be man enough to give it back to you, or he's gonna put his foot over it and whistle and look around. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pick it yeah. up later and not tell you about it. You know? Prove if a man's a, a loyal. Yeah. Another another thing that you mentioned as well um, about you know some some brothers join the truth because uh, they they believe that Isaiah four and one is gonna be a you know a, a rap video, right? <laughs> And uh, you know it says all, all things are lawful, but not expedient. Oh, you know, that's right. This is this is a, the the precept I wanted to get out because when when you you mentioned that, I was like, look, that's that's true. Some people will join this for for their own selfish reasons. Yeah. They won't do it from from you know seeking the Lord and pleasing the Lord. It's yeah. it's pleasing their own flesh. Yeah. And uh, this is in the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four. I'm gonna start at verse four. It says, and Yahushai answered and said unto them. Take heed that no man deceive you. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. All right? So you gotta understand, yeah, I wish I even understood that there's gonna be people that come in with with ill intentions. Right? They're gonna act like, yeah, I'm down with the movement and down with the cause, and then go completely left. You know what I mean? We're, we're seeing it e even in these camps today. Yeah. Some of the doctrines that they started out with. Ain't the same doctrines that they're speaking now. Yeah. You know? They've gone way left. They've gone way left, you know? Certain things that you you know, you read in the scriptures, they're doing the complete opposite and then trying to justify it with the scriptures. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. It, it you know, you gotta be careful, you gotta be mindful, you gotta let the the spirit of discernment show you their true spirit. Like my brother brought out in that, that precept. Don't be so hasty to credit somebody. Yeah. You know? Yeah, just because he's got on fringes and he's mm -hmm. saying Shalom and all that. Yep. You know what I mean? That don't make him a man of the Lord, okay? Trust me, that, oh, it's lucky. there are many called and only few are the chosen. Okay? Yeah. you got to recognize that. Many wolf in sheep's clothing, man, you know? i got a precept on deck, actually. <coughs> <clears throat> well, a similar one. This is Matthew 7, and I'll start at 15. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, inwardly they are ravening wolves. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. You know, like that scripture that said, if you, if you would get a friend, prove him first. So you'll be able to know somebody by proving them, seeing what their fruit is, seeing what kind of fruit they're producing. Because a wicked, uh, a righteous man can't produce wicked fruit, man. It's just not in his spirit, you understand? So you're going to know who is a true man of the Lord or who is truly a part of the house of David, okay, part of the hopeful elect, okay, should I say, by their fruits, by what they're bringing out, you know, who they're following, who they are, uh, the name they're calling on, the, the doctrine that they're pushing, whether they're 
uh, trying to have a good time here and trying to, you know, get reparations or build land, all this meaningless stuff, or whether they're seeking the kingdom to come, man. They're, they're storing up their treasures in heaven, you know. There's many ways you can tell who is a true man of the Lord. There's many red flags that you've got to look out for to d detect a wolf, okay. But you have to have the Holy Spirit in order to dis dis uh, to discern that, to discern who's, you know, who's who. So it says in verse 16, Matthew 7 and 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. It says, Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs, figs of thistles? You know, you can't gather, you can't get something nice out of something that's produce, that produces uh, stuff that's no good, man. If you get what I'm saying, okay? It says, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So if a man tells you you can lie with your woman on the Sabbath, that the name of the Lord isn't important, which is taking the Lord's name in vain, might I add. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people, when they hear that commandment that thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, they that goes over their head. They don't really understand what that scripture is saying. It means, when you go back into the Hebrew, it's basically saying don't take the, the Lord's name as not important, man that it don't matter and then and then and then they come out with these lessons saying that oh gms are, are, are coming up with a name doctrine the name the name is part of the doctrine you have to have the correct doctrine and if you don't have the name you ain't got you, you ain't got the truth you ain't got the correct doctrine man you can't call him whatever you want you know <clears throat> so it says um in verse 18 matthew 7 and 18 a good tree uh, cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit it says every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire the mm -hmm. lake of fire okay so all you false prophets out there and you people that follow them uh, and don't repent should I say before that spiritual ark is shut all you people that remain with these damn demons and are blinded by them you know the blind lead the blind into a ditch you people that ditch is the lake of fire man that ditch ain't something to be taken lightly okay when it says both shall fall into a ditch it don't mean you're just gonna have a little you know a little bit of trouble here and there that you're gonna overcome one day you know a little something to set you back a bit a little fall or whatever no man lake of fire man nukes all right it says uh, verse 20 close it out says wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them so you'll be able to tell who is a true friend a, one that is teaching the truth by their fruits okay that's it yeah i got a precept here yeah. actually this is uh, the book of first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says uh be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour oh. right so you got to be careful man because hey the devil's got workers out here as well man you know what i mean yeah. like the devil's trying to cause you to to go off to, to so you be sifted you Ones know what i mean under the 503 uh 501c3 hey, there you go man. They're, they're the devil's workers too man you know they're seeking whom they may devour mm -hmm. okay these people are, are freemasons and you know they're you know they're trying to uh fill their own belly man you know as the scriptures talk about these people they, they, they're basically uh trying to fill their own belly i forget the exact precept mm -hmm. man but yeah even even uh iuic right now their doctrine um if i if i understand it correctly it says that if uh, there's a righteous man an israelite man you know a, a believer and then his wife is 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 not a believer then he's to leave her oh, yeah. to get with a, yeah. a woman that's that's under the same doctrine, yeah, exactly. you know, which is completely off, right? Yeah. So th there's a scripture that says, you know, the the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, mm. and the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Like, yeah. you know, what what like how can you disregard that scripture? 
Exactly. Right? So that, that there shows you a clear sign that something's not right. Yeah. Like, hold on a minute. This scripture says this, but they're telling me this. Yep. Like, there's, there's, there's something ain't right. So the math ain't mapping. And that's <laughs> you know? how you can tell their fruit, man. Because if it don't line up with scripture, it means mm -hmm. that there's no light in them, man. You know? If they speak not according to this, this word, it's because there's no light in them. Okay? Yeah. And that's their fruit. So when you see the red flags that these people are bringing forth wicked fruit, the scriptures say a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. So as soon as you spot it and you say, hey, these people are not teaching according to sound doctrine, you need to flee away from them, man. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got a scripture right here on deck, <laughs> and that's how the spirit works, man, <laughs> that basically speaks on that, right? Romans 16 and 17. Now, the point I was trying to get at was in verse 18, but the point, the, the point on what I'm actually speaking on now is, is, six, is uh, verse 17. So that's just the spirit, man. So Romans 16, 17, it says, now I beseech ye, now I beseech you brethren. Okay, brethren is the ones that are doing the will of the Father, man. They're our brother, our mother, our father, whatever, you know, the scriptures say, that Yahweh Shai said, them that do the will of my Father, okay. So now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So when it says to uh, mark them, that's a spiritual mark, man, which I believe is thawa in the, in, the, in the Greek. I believe it's called thawa, but it's a spiritual mark, which is a difference. But see, you've got people like IUIC that teach that the mark means the same thing as a mark of the beast and the the spiritual mark is the same thing and they tell they actually tell their congregation if i'm not mistaken now this is a rumor and i believe it to be true not to go they say not to go into words man you know not into the meaning of words yeah. into the meaning of words <laughs> because they don't want you getting the truth man but a great millstone they break it down thoroughly okay in the greek and hebrew they go into the meaning of words even like simple words like that you know you know you know everybody knows this word but they'll still break it down man just to really drive it home you know they're, they're good teachers and that's what a good teacher is somebody that makes things very plain and and easy for you to understand that's that's the qualities of a good teacher those are the real teachers that the men have sent the professionals not these people that say don't go into words that's another red flag right there that's that's another sign of wicked fruit, man. A real prophet, a real teacher would never tell you not to go into the meaning of words, man. And they will never say that the two words mean the same thing. But you got people that say, okay, John 3.16, uh, where it says world, okay, that, that's cosmos. But then and, and they'll try to cut John 3.16 by saying, oh, it's, it's a different word for world. But they won't, they won't keep that same energy when it comes to the word mark. Okay, there is such thing as a spiritual and a physical mark, man. Which my point in that is that the mark of the beast is the RFID microchip, man. Okay. Now, let me just read this again, okay? Romans 16 and 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which means to watch them, you know. Uh, mark them, uh, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. So if they're teaching something that's off, according to what you've learned from Great Millstone, then mark them, they're bug outs. Stay away from them, avoid them, flee from them. I don't care how much of a bond you've made with them, it's time to let them go, man. And it ain't nothing personal. It's just that you care about your salvation and you believe that the choice you're making is the right one. And they'll have to understand, okay? You know, it ain't hurting nobody if you're caring about your salvation. If they're true men of the Lord, which they claim to be, then they would understand, all right? So verse 18, it says, For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, but their own belly. They're only looking for their own thing, man. Okay? The scriptures say, um, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. They're going to flow nothing but truth out of their belly, which means your mind. Okay. So, 
I'm going to read 18 again, Romans 16 and 18. It says, For they that, which, that are such, Salakia, serve not our Lord Yahawashai, Hamashiach, but their own belly, their own mind. They're seeking their own will, man. Okay? Whether it be to gain riches or to gain followers or to gain uh, some sort of respect in this kingdom, some sort of uh, reverence. Reverence. Yeah, man. It says, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. <clears throat> that also goes into those little gimmicks that they do, the little sound effects. When they think, oh, GMS just got bodied, and then they'll have the rumbling sound like Charlie Ex Sloth. Explosions. Yeah, explosions and <laughs> cut, uh, chopping Swords. sounds. Ching, Swords. Ching. Ching. Man, that's all gimmicks, man. Okay, these people are clowns, and they're fooling you. All right, and you know who I'm talking about. And it's not only one camp that does that either, okay? Yeah, I just want to uh, sort of jump on the fact um, when you were saying about how they tell you not to go into words. Yeah. And uh, John 3.16 gives you the definition of the, or, or says the word world in it. Yeah. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, uh, Hath in the last days spoken to us un, uh, unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, plural. So what's the definition for that? Is it the same definition as John 3.16 or is it a different definition mm. for the word worlds? And, and, and this, this is what we mean by, you know, A, one word can mean multiple different things. So you have to go into the understanding of that word to know what it's talking about. Otherwise, your, your, um, your understanding is off, mm. right? And that's, that's just to touch on the point that you brought out about going into definitions, the definitions yeah. of words. Okay. Okay, man. You know, it's important, you know, if they're not speaking according to this word, it's because there's no light in them, man. You know, I can't stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to get this um, just to bring this out because uh, obviously, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, the, the, the women you know uh seeking men you know in in the times of the of the prophecy um this is in the book of isaiah chapter 13 verse 12. it says i will make a man more precious than fine gold even a man than the golden wedge of ophir right so it just shows goes to show you like you know the, the men of the lord are going to be like fine gold they're going to be precious it's going to be rare it's going to be rare that you find a righteous man that's that's going to have his is head on his shoulders with the correct doctrine you know that's not going to take advantage of you but lead you in a righteous way mm. right and that man is going to be protected by the lord exactly divine intervention and all sorts of miracles man he exactly. may even have spiritual power during that time yeah you never know but either way the lord gonna set it up to make this prophecy come to pass the men of the Lord are getting ready to be more precious than fine gold and it's going to be known mm -hmm. during that time, man. Yeah, because like we say, man, these prophecies are getting thicker and, and, and coming thicker and faster. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to jump to, uh, you know, I, I love reading this, this chapter and I do bring it out a lot, but, you know, it's relevant, right? Because like you say, we're talking about prophecies, the time that we're coming into is a time of hate, a time of war, right? This is Matthew chapter 24. And uh, it says, uh, this is verse 6. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we're starting to see rumors of wars, right? You can see that, you know, uh, Taiwan is currently being surrounded by China. A major you know? military escalation is underway between China and Taiwan. Let's find out why. No shots have been fired, but in two days of military drills, the Chinese military has encircled the island. And Taiwan has mobilized its military. China says the war games are to test its ability to seize power, sending its navy, fighter jets, and the Coast Guard close to Taiwan. It says it's punishing the island for statements made by its new president, Lai ching -chi. He said Taiwan and China are not subordinate to each other. He was only inaugurated on Monday. China called the statement ugly and disgraceful. China has vowed to unify Taiwan with the mainland. It regards it as a breakaway province. But Taiwan is trying to maintain the status quo. Things haven't looked this tense in the Taiwan Strait 
in almost two years. That, that, that can kick off at any moment. And that, yeah. you know, anything that goes wrong there, like, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like being uh, in, in, in the forest, right? During the summer months and everything's just dry. And all it takes is that one little spark and boom, everything goes up in flames, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's literally where we are right now, mm -hmm. right? You got Ukraine uh, getting ready to, to, you know, step their levels up, you know? <laughs> In, in, in the sense of, of going going after Russian, like striking Russian territory, mm, you know? They're desperate, man. They, they, they got barely any soldiers left, yeah. apparently, man. And, and that's what I was gonna, uh, that's why I brought that out. Cause yeah. like, look at the, look at the, um, the men yeah. in, in Ukraine. Yeah, they're, they're, they're wiped out wiped completely. Out. And that's, it's gonna be the same in Babylon damn, the Great, man. Yeah. They're damn near wiped out. They, they, they send in letters to, to these other countries that, that Ukrainian men are in and, and sort of, asking the, the governments if they could deport the men back to, to, to Ukraine to fight. Like well, Europe has a message for Ukraine and Zelensky. You can F right off, basically. Uh, we're not going to send you, your young Ukrainian men that fled your war zone back home into the meat grinder. That's what Europe is basically saying today. Ukraine has, of course, run out of men to fight NATO's war. And they're calling on Europe to send the draft dodgers back home to fight. They're calling them draft dodgers, you know? Well, a number of European Union We didn't call countries, them draft dodgers last year. I mean, let's just think back to well, how... we didn't call them that. No, yeah. but think back how the mainstream media talked about these like cosmopolitan Europeans who had white skin too and were just fleeing their country which was a normal European place and that it was so kind of Westerners to open their doors to them like they were called refugees yes they now were they're called, called draft dodgers right this Isn't is an amazing, amazing turn of uh, nomenclature yeah it really is like, how desperate you gotta be yeah. to Hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, try and extradite, need, yeah. extradite our citizens back to us yeah. so we can send them off to their graves. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's, <laughs> it says here, uh, verse seven, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. And like we say, you know, this is just the beginning. But the prophecies are unfolding one after the other, starting to speed up. You know, one minute you wake up, you see the Iranian president's had a, a helicopter crash. The next day you wake up, Russia's getting ready to, you know, or, or Russia's launched um, a, a weapon system into space that could take out American satellites. You wake up the next day and you got flipping, um, you got China surrounding Taiwan. It's like, yo, one thing after the other just keeps kicking off. And then you got the, the beast system the digital system yeah. that's coming into effect and it's, it's just getting ready to be rolled out. Yeah, because they're making advances in that um, brain chip technology. That's man. right. You know, which is more showing who has the truth, man. It's becoming more evident who has the truth, you know, because we've been saying, you know, us that teach the same doctrine as Great Millstone, we're the ones that have been stressing the truth on that important prophecy. Mm -hmm. And when it actually comes to pass, then it will be known who are the Lord's chosen, man. Yeah, it's, it's getting harder and harder for these other camps to deny yeah, man. Who, who has the truth, really. They could, they could sit there and still dance around it a bit. Yeah, but a little bit. Like, like Nate changing yeah, up You know what I mean? Like, yeah. at some point, you're going to have to say, oh, you know what? I can't deny that yeah, right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's too... They're it's, blatantly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the biggest I told you so. Exactly. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that's just uh, that's just what it is, man, you know. You just got to hold fast that which you have till the Lord comes. And we have mm -hmm. the truth, man. So we're going to stick to what we've been saying, yep. you know. Yeah. Because we know through faith, we're men of faith, man. And we know through faith that we have the truth, you know. That's right. But, you know, in the end, we'll get our glory, man. Because right now, people are mocking and scoffing. But then they're gonna re they're gonna be like, oh shit, those GMS brothers were right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I brought out Second Ezra's um, sixteen and thirty three earlier about the virgins shall mourn having no bridegrooms. Right, the men are gonna die in the war. All right. So I want to read on because I meant to do that earlier, but I just want to mention uh, just, there's a little bit more meat there. That I don't want to leave out. 
Verse 35, so this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 35, and I'm going to read on down. Hear now these things, and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. So this is directly speaking to you out there who are the true servants of the Lord, right? It says to hear these things that are written here, right? That men are going to die in a war, women are going to be, you know, shortage of men are going to be mourning for the lack of help, okay? which they they're going to realize they need okay they're going to learn the hard way that they need verse 36 so second issues uh 16 and 36 it says behold uh behold the word of the lord receive it believe not the gods of whom the lord spake and we know that there's only one god but this is god uh with a uh, lowercase g which is talking about these false gods like Allah and Jesus and all these other mm -hmm. uh, false deities that our people call on, man. Okay, so it's saying don't believe in the, the, these false gods that the rest of these people believe in, man. Because Jesus is going to let you down during that time, man. Okay, because he was always a false god. And it's more than been proven in these times we're living in. And it does matter what you call him and who you claim as your lord and savior man okay the truth matters his color matters who his people are matters and the truth about who he came for matters because if you're worshiping this character jesus that they gave you then you, it means that you've had your chance to learn the truth you've had access to the truth but you denied it so you're just gonna have to call upon the gods you've chosen let them deliver you in your time of trouble, man. Yeah, and you're going off as well because mm. the Lord says, um, you shall have no other gods before me. That's right? It. So if you're worshipping yeah. Jesus, yeah. I don't even like to use that name, yeah, right? But we will for edification. So yeah, but for ever yeah, exactly. But like you're you're worshipping this guy, you're 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 now taking your attention away from, from the Lord and giving it to this this man that's dead. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. that's nothing. That's, that's <laughs> that doesn't do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. He's a homosexual that s tried to sleep with his sister. Yeah, Cesar Yeah. All right. So verse seven, second Ezra sixteen and, and thirty-seven. It's like yeah. It says, "Behold, the plagues draw nigh," meaning they're drawing near. Okay, the plagues that the Bible talked about: famine, war, death, pestilence. It's, you've got the WHO talking about um, bird flu and all that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're trying to get this thing going again, man. They're talking about worldwide lockdowns and stuff, man. Yeah, they're also, also to mention power outages. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, you got the, the UK government website getting the people prepared for, for such events. Yeah. Almost as if they know something's coming, but yeah. Look, yeah, come like on, you. man. That's right, you know. And these are all part of the plagues that are drawing nigh and not slack they're drawing near mm -hmm. all right it says as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth great pains can pass her womb which pains when the child cometh forth they slack not a moment right it says even so shall the plagues be shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side meaning when this thing really ha starts to uh, kick off Jacob's trouble hey man these plagues are gonna they listen it's gonna be left right and center man right right now everybody's all over TikTok talking about what's what the hell is going on in the world first we had this we had this we had COVID we had this and they're all panicking. Now we got World War Three about to happen. And, you know, that ain't even... Listen, this is the beginning of sorrows, man. That ain't even the icing on the cake. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is why the Lord sent the prophets, man. The prophets have been out here 30 plus years given the warning because that's how serious this situation mm -hmm. is, man. And that's, that also shows you the mercy of the Lord because the Lord could have mm. just, boom, done. Yeah. But he, he's given you the opportunity, 30 years, yeah. the opportunity to to repent and come yeah. back to him and just follow his ways that's right because the yeah. lord is just in everything exactly. he does so when he destroys your ass with nuclear fire and the scriptures say how they're going to curse the lord because of the hail the great hail and stuff which is the nukes 
when this happens, people are going to be pissed off and cursing at the God of heaven. You know, the creator of the earth. They're going to be cursing him out, man. But, hey, he's not in the wrong. He's not the bad guy because he gave you plenty of warning, man. But what did you do with it? You abused his prophets, wanted to call us black Hebrew Israelites in error. You wanted to call us a hate group, a cult. All mm -hmm. these things that you said, we were fear mongers, we need to lighten up, hate, all these things, man. Hate preachers. Racists, <laughs> you know. But, hey, you're going to have to, hey, if that's the stance you want to lean upon, if that's what you want to lean upon, that we're these things that you say, then good luck with that, man. Because you didn't recognize the prophets when they came. The prophets ain't no goody two-shoes, fake-ass Christians, man. Like, we down to earth and we're real people. We don't sugarcoat nothing. All right, we show you who we are. We ain't scared to say a little curse word. I'm not saying it's okay to curse like a sailor, but it just means that we're not hiding nothing, man. We're honest people. We're not gonna put on a face and, and pretend like we're these really nice people. We're gonna show you who we are, man. We're real people, and that's who the Lord is dealing with, man. You know what I mean? Verse 40, 2nd Ezra 16 and 40. Oh, my people, all right? speaking to the Israelites not all nations that's all the Lord is dealing with is the Israelites and I like I, like we say in the beginning of all of our lessons an Israelite can look like another nation <clears throat> you ain't got to look like Wesley Snipes to be an Israelite okay <clears throat> it's not about skin tone <clears throat> so if you look like a so-called white man blonde hair blue eyes or a white so-called white woman for an example, you know what I mean? You could still be an Israelite if this message resonates with your spirit. Yeah. Because only an Israelite can receive this. This is why this is speaking to his people. No matter what nation you've been scattered to or what you may look like. Yeah, because right? like, like you say, you know, or, or when we came in with the lesson, it's like the, it's, it goes through the chosen seed line. If you're of that chosen seed line and you're a blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, Aryan, you, you still go back to the chosen seed line, right? It ain't about the, the skin color or the outward appearance. That's it. It's about your, your bloodline. Where's your bloodline, bloodline goes through? And like my brother said, when you bring out the scriptures and it resonates with you, that's that's a sure sign that you, you potentially could be an Israelite, mm. you know? Because yeah, a heathen can't repent. They mm -hmm. can't clean up their ways and keep the laws, man. They can't be born again, okay? A heathen is a heathen and they're not the Lord's people and that's just how it is. But you can look like a heathen and if you have the ability to repent and cleave to the prophets and listen to the voice of the Lord, then you're an Israelite. And that's just what it is, man. All right. Anyway, reading on, man. Verse 40, 2nd Ezra 16 and 40. Oh, my people, hear my word, which comes from the mouth of the prophets. Make you ready to the battle which means the times that we're coming into, okay, because all hell's about to break loose and we are at war right now, whether you understand it or not. There's wars on all fronts. Information war, you know. Wars in spiritually high places. Spirit, yeah, exactly. But we're at war, man. It's the forces of good and evil, okay. It says, make you ready to the battle and in those evils, okay, the time of Jacob's trouble, it says, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Meaning, a pilgrim is somebody that ain't got a place to settle. They're traveling. You know what I mean? They're a traveler. They're not comfortable, all right? They can up and go anytime. They ain't settled. They ain't, they ain't trying to build a, a, a house here and dwell in it. You know what I mean? Um... I'm gonna stop there, all right? So basically, don't get comfortable, all right? Because things are about to change, man. It's all about to, it's all about to kick off, man. Yeah, I got a quick preset. You gotta be in the right mindset. Yeah, come on. Yeah, this is the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, and I'm gonna start at verse, uh, ver I'm gonna start from the top, verse one. It says, but of the times and the seasons, like we were talking about earlier, there's a season and a time for everything under the, uh, under the heaven. It's, uh, I'm going to start again. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. We don't need to tell you where, where we are right now. You know, the times yeah, that we're coming prophecy. into. Yeah. Yep. It says, For yourselves know perfectly 
that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And the reason it's going to come as a thief in the night because people ain't paying attention. They ain't yeah. following along with the prophecies. They ain't, they're not interested, right? Yeah. So it's going to come upon them like, mm -hmm. sh like unawares. They're not even going to notice until it happens, mm -hmm. right? And then they're going to be in, in trouble, you know, yeah. uh, up, up Shit's Creek without a paddle, you know what I mean? It says, uh, verse 3, But when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right? So when, you know, you think about a, a woman, you know, who's pregnant, as soon as that them that water breaks, she's going into labor. That's it, and she's not gonna hold that labor. No, back. you ain't you ain't gonna stop it, you know what I mean? Yeah. We've already got to that point now where the water's broke. You know, these these pains are coming. Right? And and there ain't nothing gonna stop it. That 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 prophecy is gonna be fulfilled and it's gonna come. You know how they say when a woman's about to give birth, she gets uh, quicker contractions. You know, the contractions get stronger and faster. You know, until the baby's getting ready to push, that's where we are. You know what I mean? It says, verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. That's it. Right? It says, Ye are all children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Meaning, hey, as brothers out here that are staying in these prophecies, that are keeping an eye on, on the events that are taking place in the world, hey, we understand the times that we're coming in, so it's not going to come as a shock to us because we can see it coming. Yeah, we're yeah? them ones that won't be deceived. Exactly, know? exactly, and, and, we understand. And, yeah, and we're also the light bearers, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the real Illuminati on the, on the right-hand side, not on the left-hand side. Yeah. Man. We're the Illuminati in righteousness, man. We possess the light, you know. We're in, we're in, we, it ain't going to catch us off guard because we're the watchmen and we are on our watchtower watching you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't get into conspiracy theories. Hey, we dive head first into that shit, man. <laughs> okay, we're looking for the next so-called conspiracy theory, man. Yeah. Because you, you could even you could even say to, uh, you know, if you, you look at the, the events that are taking place over in, in Israel right now, right? You know, a lot of them, they're saying, well, we're doing this for the, the peace and security. The, the peace and security of... of of you know our country the peace and security the peace and stability you know you're hearing a lot of those words right and what did the scriptures say uh i'm gonna just read it again it says uh for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape meaning hey this thing's gonna escalate it's gonna go boil over whatever you you know want to emphasize it as is what's going to happen. It's, it's going to kick off. It's gonna get it ain't going to get peace and safety because yeah. we ain't in the time of peace. We're yeah. in a time of war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's going to boil over till it mm -hmm. becomes nuclear, man. Yeah. Those nuclear weapons were not created to sit on a shelf and look pretty. <laughs> They're going to be used. They're not going to collect dust. You know what I mean? They itching to use these things. These, these people, these world leaders are madmen. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you haven't noticed, Okay. You know, the elites, they have all, all the money in the world to, to do what they want. You know, at some point, yeah. when you, 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 you have everything, yeah. what else is there to do? Now it's time to meddle in the affairs of, of people's lives mm. because they put themselves in that God complex. But they're like, they're, they're megalomaniacs, you know what I mean? They're ready to, hey, they're ready to torch this thing because right. what else have they got to lose? Diabolical mad yeah, scientists, yeah. man, and they're itching to use their new toys, man. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They spend all this money on these these state-of-the-art bunkers and state-of-the-art <laughs> weapons. Yeah. You don't think they're gonna be like, oh, come on, man? Like they're looking at their red button, like, yeah, oh, yeah, I just, I just wanna. Touch it. <laughs> I bet they're sat there, like, oh, I just nah, wanna. I shouldn't. Mm, I just wanna yeah. touch it. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> that's the that's the spirit they probably got on them right now. But the Lord's like, nah, not not yet. Yeah. You know, a few more things. Gotta gotta yeah. come to pass before before that day, but it's gonna happen. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you press that button, yeah. and then it's 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 all over for you from from that point. Yeah, you know but they're gonna yeah. think that evil thought. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna press that button. That's it. Eventually. You got uh, you got like all these prophecies, like like signs in the heavens. Yeah. You know we've had we've had the the eclipse. Yeah. You know all the people that were bugging out. Ah, oh, yeah. the eclipse. 
you had that that um that event that took took place in Portugal with that, that meet you. Yeah. Yeah, come on. yeah. You yeah. know, like all, all these things that, that are happening in the heavens, like this is exactly what the scriptures have told us is gonna happen. And what's funny is that event, that meteor, that was very spiritual because that come out of nowhere while everybody was partying and mm -hmm. doing their thing. And that's exactly how the day of the Lord is gonna sneak up on these people, man. Yeah. It's, that's immediately what I thought of when I saw that. I was like, yeah, that's how the day of the Lord gonna sneak up on your ass catch you off guard man in your security when you're having fun or whatever yep you know people are yep. eating and drinking giving in marriage mm -hmm. you know just like the days of Noah man when the flood came and took them away we're living in them times again this time it's gonna be nuclear fire man yeah it ain't gonna be water okay yeah because we had uh we had that um uh the northern lights mm. you know we got that app uh the sun as well the sun oh, yeah, yeah. The, a lot of activity a lot sun. of activity That's signs you know. in the heavens too man mm -hmm. you know but that ties in with that but yeah man it, like like brother just said man we're, we're in those times man like and if you ain't prepared for it you're you going you're going to be caught unawares mm. you know and hey man i would say good luck but you you ain't gonna have it man you know what i mean like if you ain't got the lord then you're through basically yeah, ain't no in such a nutshell thing as luck anyway. <laughs> exactly yeah, man. Got anything else? No. All right, we'll close it out here then. You know, Lord willing, you've been edified through this lesson, all right? Just warning you of the times we're living in, you know. Spirit had us get on Eve a little bit, you know, because that's because of the severity of it. And we mm -hmm. wasn't even planning on talking about you Eves like that, man. Yeah. It just so happened that, hey, that's the way the Spirit led us again, you know, and we can't. We can't stress it enough, all right? It ain't about us constantly getting on the women. Don't look at it like that, man. The Spirit of the Lord is directing our, our you know, these lessons. And it's got to the point where you women, it's urgent that you get yourself right. Get yourself a man of the Lord. Get yourself a hedge of protection before that day. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be way, Jacob's trouble is about to be way worse for you women in that mm -hmm. day, man. All right? Anyway. Lord willing, you've been edified through this lesson. I'm going to close it out, all right? And give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh. 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 Yahwe